There are a number of specific um, challenges with working with spatial data. Some of the challenges are the sort of challenges you get with any data. So there are issues of data quality, issues of compatibility between data sets. But with spatial data, I would say that there are particular issues, especially with the data I'm working with, around scale and also around the accuracy of the data. So when I'm talking about accuracy, I'm talking about how reliably certain can I be that the location of my data, the location point I've got of where something's occurring, in this case, a crime of vandalism, because that's what I'm looking about, how reliably certain can I be that that is actually accurate? Has it been put in the right spot or, or not? And how reliably certain do I actually need to be? Because in my research, I'm particularly interested in differences at a local neighbourhood level. Therefore, which is perhaps one or two streets together, or a few streets together, but it, I don't necessarily need to know precisely which street corner something happens at. Um, so for me, I need it to be accurate enough that I'm pretty certain it's happening in the right neighbourhood, or I can be certain about something about the neighbourhood it's occurring in, but I don't necessarily need to know which house. Um, and in terms of scale, I need to think very, it's a similar question really, it becomes at what level do I want to look at my data at? Now I actually want to be able to look at my data at multiple scales because I don't really know at what level the phenomena is, is occurring at and at what level it's having an influence. Um, when you actually think about what makes up a neighbourhood, um, you could think about it being collections of houses, you could think about it being collections of streets, you can think about it being an area, area of, of town that might have a, a local name. And, and each of these things may operate at a different scale, so you need to then start thinking about, well, what kind of geographic boundaries can I actually find that might express those scales? What's out there that I can use? And then you need to think about, well, what are these boundaries that I can actually get hold of? What are they being collected for? Now, I'm working in Scotland. And in Scotland, there are pre-available boundaries I can use available through UK Border Service. And they are things like wards or what are called the statistical geographies. So statistical geographies, I'm sorry. Um, so things like output areas or data zones. Output areas are the smallest level. Um, if you're familiar with American data, they're a bit like census blocks. Um, and they are the smallest level of data at which census data is released. Um, and they're designed to sort of reflect um, groups of, I think it's something between 50 and 200 people. And so they're the sort of smallest unit of kind of neighbourhood, I suppose, that you can get data at. And they've been produced to be relatively homogenous, so to take into account of differences between local neighbourhoods looking at various social demographic variables. So they're good neighbourhood representation. Ward data, on the other hand, which tends to be at a bigger scale, has been created for the purposes of um, electoral, um, uh, electoral purposes, so for, for voting people. So it, they tend to vary a lot in size and they tend to change over time, whereas things like output areas stay stable over a long time. So they're a good data set for me to look at because I'm looking at no neighbourhoods. So in that case, there's specific challenges saying, well, is this sort of, at, at the level I can get data at, is that useful? Well, the second challenge you run into is that if you want to compare your localised data, such as I'm using, um, with other data, what other data can you get at what scale? And what you invariably seem to find is that different types of sociodemographic data are released at different scales and at different geographical units. Um, and you need to think about what level does is, is that data available at? Is it small enough for the, for the problem that you want to look at? Um, in my case, I actually want to look things at a very small scale, um, and actually there's not that much data available at, at output area level. Um, a lot of the data I'm interested in is released at data zone level, so I've had to look around at, to see well, what data is available and what data I can use. Um, and what data can, might I be able to use that I can perhaps aggregate up at different scales. Now, it turns out there's not a lot of that, but there is data around postcodes and address counts that I've been able to look at to give a sort of rough proxy of how many people have you got in an area. Um, a further challenge, I suppose, coming back to that scale issue is what level of, am I going to want to look at my data at? In my case, I'm looking at crime data. I knew I wanted to look at it at multiple scales because I was interested in what happens at different times, what happens at different scales, do you get different patterns when you look at this data at different scales? So I couldn't be totally certain starting out that if I said, well, just give me the postcode for my data, that that would be 
good enough for me to be able to um, aggregate it to different scales. So what I wanted was point level data. Um, so a specific challenge for me is to get data to giving me the exact location of something because once I've got the exact location I can then change it or aggregate it up to whatever scale I want. Um, that gives other, cha other, other challenges but, but that is um, extremely helpful to be able to start at that level. Um, you won't be able to get all data at that level but if you can, and in my case I've been able to get my crime data, if you can get some level of the exact location that could be helpful to you.